I'm, I'm, we're doing it now. Here we go. This guy's someone else's work as their own used it to cheat in a cosplay the contest cosplay and then got caught red cheating handed. scandal in years but how do you cheat in a cosplay contest well i've been competing I'm, I'm, in cosplay contests for 10 years and let's i've judged this. them for like six so i'm gonna make sure you know how these contests work to explain the biggest cosplay contest cheating scandal in years so we're not talking I'm about ready. a Halloween costume contest where the guy dressed as Jesus wins because that's funny. These are craftsman contests that, that usually funny. happen at anime, comic, and gaming conventions, and they focus on the hey, quality it's the RuneScape of the handmade costume. What is this? What am I looking at? I I don't I genuinely don't know what she's tr trying to be here. I don't like it though. Hey, I love the heart. Much love. Wow. Much love. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for the care. Thanks for the love. That's the name of the emote. That's amazing. Well done. That's really great. Okay, we're, we're gonna do the class play. So you're getting judged on your craftsmanship. Judges are looking at the sewing, the prop work, the foam work, and 99% of the time, wow. the person competing is also the person wearing the cosplay. But there are also plenty of competitions that will let you use a model to wear the cosplay instead. The creator just also has to be present. These contests were born in a time before high quality pre-made cosplays were widely available. A time where if you wanted to cosplay Play most characters, you had to make that cosplay. And Did these you? contests remain a way to reward and celebrate people for honing and learning all of these skills to bring everybody's sure favorite characters that? to life. And the stakes can range anywhere from international trips to thousands of dollars to just bragging rights. But these contests kind of remain the Wild West with wildly different rules and regulations between Happy each judging. one. But the biggest general rule that most of them have is that you yourself must have made- I like this person's hair. She has really nice hair, doesn't she? Is it just me or is her hair really, it's really vibrant. I think she spent a lot of effort in it. Some percentage of that cosplay, and usually that percentage falls at 70%. But Bad. the more you hand make, the better. Winners are determined by a lot of different factors, but the short version is the best made cosplay wins. Not the flashiest or the funniest. And there are only two ways you can cheat in a cosplay contest. And the first is by lying. Cosplays are really difficult things to make and sometimes it takes a village and getting help from a friend putting on thousands of rhinestones is not inherently cheating. But buying an entire cosplay and passing it off as if you made it yourself is, we'll get to that. The thing is though, some people do just buy pieces for their cosplay and that in itself is not inherently cheating. But it's not always a good idea. If someone enters into a contest in a cosplay that's this big armor piece that they made and that looks amazing, but then they just bought some pants. You're not disqualified for not making your pants, but the judges cannot judge you on a pair of jeans that you yourself did not make. Then in the same competition, somebody enters in the same cosplay of the same character, which happens a lot actually. And this cosplayer made both the armor and made those pants. So both people did a great did a job on the effort. armor, but who do you think the judges are going to place higher? Absolutely when you buy effort. something for Why the cosplay, you? you are eliminating a piece of that cosplay that could have been used to show the judges a different skill. And nowadays- But why would- Hold on, what? So they're not judging on the looks of the cosplay, they're judging on the outfit? That seems a little bit strange to me, just a little bit, but I guess, I, I mean, okay. Competition is really fierce and showing every skill that you possibly can is really important in these contests. The other way you can cheat is something we call sandbagging and sandbagging usually means being bad on purpose because you're not taking your opponent seriously, but somehow in cosplay we gave it an entirely different definition. Sandbagging in cosplay is entering a cosplay that has already won a major award into another contest. If you win like a small 
smaller award and you enter again to try to get a better award, that's usually totally fine. But if a cosplay has already won best in show, most contests will not allow it to be entered. Though Wild West again, um, some contests are actually totally okay with double dipping, but most contests aren't, and even when they are okay with it, most of the community kind of looks down on it anyway. So you can imagine how mad people were when this person got caught doing both. But before I get to that, I gotta thank Skillshare for sponsoring this. No, you Foundations don't. is helping. No, you don't. You don't need Skillshare. Lena Leavy, a, a talented cosplayer living in Russia with a small following. Back in 2019, Lena created an incredibly detailed cosplay of the character Seth Knight Road or Night Lord, I think he has two names, from the anime Trinity Blood. She documented the process of making this on her Twitter and even won an award for it. Years later, she ends up selling the cosplay for mere pennies to someone across mere the world. Mere pennies, huh? A Rhode Island cosplayer by the- Yeah, F skill, Skillshare. TF2, yeah. Yeah, I didn't, I have never played TF2. That's why I didn't know where it was from. My bad, my bad. But yeah, Skillshare sucks, uber dog dicks. Uh, just like, um, Better help, both of them are giant scams. The name Myra Theon. Myra had been cosplaying since 2014, and while I was able to find a little bit about her from a few old articles, it's hard to say what she had been up to recently because, spoiler, she deleted all of her social media Of course accounts. she did. Why but I did find have? this 2017 interview she did with the channel Geeky Panda. And from that, I found out that at the time, uh -oh. she was involved with one of the largest- Did you Star delete Wars all your social group? media accounts? You're done. Okay, you know, that means you are guilty. You have admitted guilt. Groups, the 501st Legion. She was also apparently at that time a full-time cosplayer doing commission work. And commission work is when you have someone else pay you to make a cosplay yeah. for them. And from what I hear, it's one of the most miserable jobs out there and it's not something anyone should be aspiring to do. Never. Anyway, she talks about her most recent cosplay where she's very upfront that she got some help from some of her friends on some of the armor pieces, but that she did all of the sewing. And she seems like a bright and talented cosplayer who said some things that I fully agree with. My biggest thing is, if you are okay with your costume, then that's perfectly okay. Yeah, but you can't say that. Oh, if you're okay with your body, that's perfectly okay. All right, but what happens if your body is obese and you're gonna have a heart attack? Or you're perfectly okay with your physique? Oh wait, you're too skinny and you're gonna die by anorexia? Hmm, that's not good. Hmm, you're okay with your outfit, but you look like a scumball? Hmm, you ain't gonna win the contest then. Sorry, lady, your sentence doesn't make sense. You don't have to make your, your costume screen accurate. You don't have to be the best at what you do. It is whatever makes you happy, and you do as long as you are comfortable with your costume and you're having fun. In a different interview, she claims to have sold the rights to a female titan zentai suit design to ZentaiZentai.com. And if you have no idea what I just said, do you know those morph suits? I have no idea what she just said either. I really don't know. So I can't, can like I don't. Spider-Man or something? Well, she's I basically saying she designed that actual graphic that gets printed on those bodysuits to the largest seller of those kinds of bodysuits. But she apparently didn't like wearing the cosplay anymore because too many people had her design. Yeah. Okay. She seemed like a talented cosplayer, a proclaimed right. contributor yeah. to ready-made bodysuits. She got help from friends sometimes, but was upfront about it. But flash forward six years and she would be saying, You don't have to make your, your costume Back to Lena. She doesn't know much about the buyer after the cosplay is sold and okay. never really sees the cosplay or the buyer again until she gets a message. Somebody messaged Lena asking if Myra was wearing Lena's Seth cosplay as it looked incredibly similar. Lena tried to look at Myra's page, but she was blocked. But she is able to find an Instagram reel with Myra in it. The reel was posted by a photographer who had gotten a clip of Myra at Katsukon, and its caption kind Here's of set thieving. everything off. The photographer we got wrote, some thieving going I was blown on. away by Myra's dedication and attention to detail in bringing this character to life, and that she clearly put a tremendous amount of effort into capturing the essence of the character. 
despite what the caption said, this was Lena's Seth cosplay. And yes, it is possible that two people can make a cosplay of the same character and the two cosplays come out almost indistinguishable. But Lena had taken so many artistic liberties with Seth. Extra details that made it incredible. I mean, she made it though. She made it different. She didn't steal it. She made it. Right? So let's stop. This. So what? Clear. Yeah, she inspired her design. Design thieving happens all the time. To Lena and anybody with eyes that this was Lena's Seth. But then what seemed like an innocent photographer's crediting mistake spiraled into a giant cheating scandal because Myra wasn't just telling random photographers that she made the cosplay. No, she had been entering a cosplay that she bought from another person. In Wait a second. She didn't make it. She bought it. She bought it. She didn't make it. I take it. I take it back. I take it back. I take it all back. She's a scumbag. Scumbag. To craftsmanship contests without Lena's knowledge. And not just once either. She but she also did buy it, right? Did, did, did the other girl get paid for it? Pricing, right? If, I don't know if this is fair. If you paid for the costume, then would it be fair to enter that into an, I guess, right? You paid for it. You can do whatever, the, whatever you want with it, right? I don't see a problem with that. Took this cosplay to several cons to compete and even win awards. She allegedly competed in up to four costume contests, but I was only able to find footage of two of them. She also allegedly won best in show at Kineticon and second place masters at Anime NYC, but this stuff is really hard to find now because her shit's gone. And the two I of have footage for are her winning best needlework at Fan Expo Salt Lake and her competing at the New York Comic Con Crown Championships of Cosplay qualifier where she was rightly beaten out by okay. the GOAT. Sarcasm, he may. After Lena finds out about this, she tweets about it where she does include proof that Myra was in fact the buyer. To make it even worse, it turns out that the Seth cosplay wasn't even the only cosplay that she bought and passed off as her own. She also- So she's an uber scumbag. She's, well, no, she's buying these though. Well, she's lying about who made them. Okay, well, let's put it in perspective here, right? It's bad, but it ain't the worst thing I ever heard. If she's getting money for it, that paid more than the costume, maybe. But it's Kim's Sakizo Necromancer and allegedly competed in that too. As this is happening, Myra tries to explain herself to Lena. This was just some big misunderstanding, okay? Myra admits outright that the cosplay is in fact Lena's, but she okay. claims that she didn't know that Lena was blocked. Mm -hmm. She admits that she did win awards, but she claims that she had just used the cosplay as a base, that she had rebuilt and retooled parts of it and even made a build book for the parts that she remade. She also says that she told all of this to the judges, that she was very upfront that the cosplay had been purchased and retooled. Where are you now? So there's an interesting thing that Crown Championships does with its stage presentation. When the cosplayer walks across the stage, the MC reads a little script about how that cosplay was made. And okay. that script is written by the cosplayer. So while Fifi O'Hara, I'm sorry, Jeremy Carey, is reading this Fifi. script, these are Myra's words. This costume features over 5,000 hand-sewn beads and crystals. Displaying techniques such as deconstruction of lace, warbler, EVA foam, laser printing, cor corsetry, prop work, and more. It took over three months of work and required copious amounts of midnight Taco Bell trips to complete. <laughs> Y'all give it up! Taco Bell trips, huh? Suffice it to say, not all of Myra's statements you, you really would be that up. thin, lady. She also claims lying. that the award she got for needlework was just for some embroidery that she herself added know you're to lying. the cosplay. But I'm sorry, needlework categories encompass all of sewing. And I know she didn't change any of the sewing for reasons I'll get to later. She does say that there were some cons that didn't place her because the cosplay wasn't entirely handmade, which could easily be true. And if I were to speculate and allege on my own, this is 
speculation. I think that, you know, it's possible that she got that feedback and then realized it was probably good to omit that information in the future. She also then apologizes for the photographer, saying that the photographer just misunderstood what she said, which could be completely believable. I wanted to reach out to She's the photographer, smart. but then I realized most of his content now is putting eggs in camera bodies, and I was a little horrified anyway. So we do know it's the same cop. What kind of psychopath puts eggs in cameras? What? <laughs> Excuse me? What? What did I just watch? <laughs> Hold on, go back. I thought the cosplay was some. I was not ready for eggs and cameras. <laughs> yeah, that's a new one to me too. Cosplay. But do we have any proof that she did make major changes to the thing and how many changes would be enough to warrant None. competing in it? Not Unfortunately, enough. because all Myra's accounts are gone, it's really hard for me to find high quality photos of the cosplay on her. But what I do have is her statement from Crown. Remember, she wrote this. These are her words. This costume features over 5,000 hand-sewn beads and crystals. I'm gonna be fair and I'm gonna give her this one. There is actually one difference between when Myra owned it and when Lena owned it. If you look at the crystals. footage from Crown, you can see that on the edges of some of the armor, there is a sparkling glint. And in this photo, there's a weird pink sheen coming off of those edges, which makes me think that those are AB rhinestones. And there are close up pictures of Lena in the armor. That doesn't and have There's them. no rhinestones right there. So this one is okay. actually true, but it goes downhill from here. Displaying techniques such as deconstruction of lace. How are you deconstructing lace that's already on the costume? Lena has progress pictures of the lace going on, and that's a lie. Warbler, EVA foam, laser printing, prop work, and more. We know Lena did those too, and I see no difference on the foam work other than the added rhinestones. Of course, the three. This one's probably the most egregious, but I'm gonna wait a second for it. It took over three months of work and required copious amounts of midnight Taco Bell trips to complete. Guess she ordered extra liar, liar, pants on fire sauce. And it's not mentioned, but I do believe wow, that, that she at least modified cringe. some tights because yeah, I got, I got cringe than vibes. Than but even with all of that, we do have high quality photos of that necromancer cosplay I mentioned. And with my several months of experience looking at r slash find the sniper posts for way too long, I can confidently right. say that I see no difference in the necromancer cosplays whatsoever. So in my opinion, yeah, all she actually opinion? did to rework the cosplay was make new tights, add a bunch of rhinestones, and I will give her the overly fair assumption that somewhere on the cosplay, she did some extra embroidery. Um, you don't need to know a lot about cosplay to know that that doesn't come anywhere near the 70% rule that most contests require. But I know a lot about cosplay, so I want to point some things out that Lena would have had to do to Why make does this it have thing. to be the thing handmade? that's making cosplays apart from making well, that, normal clothing that. is that most cosplays are almost always impossible garments drawn with no regard for the laws of physics or normal garment construction. And Seth Knight Road exemplifies that. The first hurdle of all cosplays, but especially complicated how to get things ones, to Stay. is figuring out what the f the character is even wearing. And I'm sure that it took Lena long hours to even know where to start on patterning this thing. Patterns are the templates that we use to make garments. And if you wanna make a pair of jeans, you just go to the store and buy a jeans pattern. But when you have a weird outfit like this, you have to pattern it yourself. It takes time and measurements and drafting and redrafting to get it right. And while it's easy for me to point out all of the intricate details that went onto this cosplay, the intricate lace detailing, the subtle airbrushing on that armor, the perfectly smooth warbler work, I want to specifically point out that this cosplay's very foundation would have been a challenge on its own. And Lena pulled yeah, it sure. off really Something well. I would never Patterning and cosplay yourself in these big competitions never. is a big deal. If you didn't write the roadmap for your cosplay and somebody else did for theirs, when everybody's work is amazing, every skill 
counts. And it's kind of just another point towards the audacity of thinking you could enter a cosplay contest in a cosplay that you bought and retooled. Even if you ripped apart every seam, took apart all the armor, and rebuilt to everything from scratch, using Lena's only as a pattern, she still didn't pattern it. Not to mention the lace she didn't have to find. I think that's the fair. The ungodly structure for whatever that thing Even is on the back that she didn't have. Let's say she bought the cosplay and just cloned it. And she proved that. I would say it's fair because then she made it. Yeah. In my opinion, that would be okay. To figure out at all. All. And while be. she didn't place at Crown, she did place at Fan Expo Salt Lake, where she had claimed that she only got that needlework award for the added embroidery. But it turns out that was actually a judge's choice award for needlework. And in the video, it seemed like the judge that gave her that award was Marielle Clark. Judges' awards can be given for any Mario reason, Clark but I decided is. to reach out to Marielle about this. I was apparently wrong. Marielle apparently wasn't actually a stage judge and was just presenting the award. But she she was involved with that contest's online prejudging and was able to tell me that if there had been any indication that the cosplay had been commissioned, that she would have immediately been disqualified. I also reached out to the amazing Merida, who was one of the judges at the NYCC Crown Qualifier, uh, and who also is probably the most prolific cosplay pattern maker okay. in the world. Anyway, she did remember judging Myra, but unfortunately she sister? could not she made it IRL, but she didn't make it in the mind. But would you count that? Like, I'm thinking... Yeah, like, I mean, let's say she bought a cosplay and then cloned it, you know? I would say that's A-OK. -okay. Like, I, I'm saying, yeah, she didn't make it in the mind, whatever, but... She did put in the effort to at least cut everything and make it. Remember whether or not Myra and the, had the rules were seventy percent, right? And if she did it, that would be seventy percent. I'll chop it up to thirty percent was cloning. Mentioned anything about the cosplay I don't, I wouldn't being say she broke purchased the rules. or commissioned or not? She said it was possible, but that she just couldn't remember. I don't really have any solid evidence well, then you're whether or not she did. If you can't remember if you bought it or not, then it's your. Let's say you're making a boat and you go down the river. And you steal the design of another team. You both have similar boats. You win. Is that fair? Hold on. Let's say you're making a boat. You go down the river. To go down the river. Okay. You steal the design of another team's boat. And you have similar boats. And you win. Is that fair? Well, depends on how many modifications you do. Let's say that boat's over there. Okay, and you're in a competition. You see it. It's called scoping out the competition. You somehow make that design based on that boat, and then you improve on it. Look at look at Japanese cars. Look at a Honda and stuff. We made the car, and then they improved on it, and they took a car, bought it. They companies do it all the time. What are we even talking about here? It happens all the time. Yeah, I would say it is fair because they shouldn't have been able... You made the boat first and some, then someone paid for the design. This woman bought her cosplay. Let's say you bought the boat. You're bu they bought the boat. In your case, if you saw the design, not steal it, but saw it, not fair. But if you bought the design, cloned it, and improved on it, then yeah. If she bought the cosplay cloned it and improved on it with the beads, I would say that's fine. Yeah, I would. Because she paid for it. Did or did not lie to judges. But with what Mariel said, it is possible that that information was either omitted or misunderstood. I have judged long enough to look out for people that are lying because I've had it happen before. One of the things that I've seen people do is buy a piece of commercial clothing and then claim that they made it. And with commercial clothing, there are actually some very specific and easy telltale signs that... What are you talking about? You trying to respond to me? What are you trying to respond? 
What are you talking about? I have no idea what you're saying. See, si compadre. Okay. It is not okay. handmade, and there are some very specific questions that I can ask people that if they don't know enough about sewing, they won't know the answer to it. That stuff is very easy to catch. What's harder or even impossible You'll to catch wedged. is handmade work made by someone else. However, there are some systems in place for con runners and judges to be able to tell if somebody did actually make that cosplay. Some cons go as far as to check the competitor's social media profiles for in-progress right. pictures or prior work photos, but not all cons do that. Most cons primarily rely on build books. Build books are short! Please stop baking them 16 pages long, I've... short pamphlets that usually consist of a bunch of progress photos of that cosplay. Their primary use is to help show the judges how that cosplay was made because most costume contests have pre-judging, which is where judges get to look at the cosplay up close before the stage show. But often pre-judging times can be cool. as short as three minutes long. So build books also serve as a way to make sure you get all the information out that you need to without forgetting it in the three minutes minute word vomit that you are allotted. And having photos of that cosplay in the process of being made is usually enough to prove that that person- I, I wanna, hold on, we're gonna go back for a second. We're, I want, we're gonna look at this because I didn't really get to, to bring it up here. Look at these judges. What, what do you see? What do you see with this? Because you know what I see? I see messed up people. I see, yeah, I see people that are not normal. There's something wrong with each and every one of these three, four people here. I, I, I don't know how to explain it. I, look at her eye. Like, I mean, these aren't normal looking people. Something's, I, I don't, I don't know how to, you understand it? Okay. I maybe I, I thought I was going a little crazy, sound a little bad, but there's definitely something off about him. The way to make the three minute made that cosplay, except in this case, Lena had posted a lot of work in progress photos on her Twitter without herself in any of them. Yeehaw! Anyway. Here's how I know for sure that she didn't actually make any changes besides the rhinestones, that she didn't use Lena's as a pattern, and that the corsetry claim is not just a straight up lie, but kind of a stupid thing to say. One telltale aspect of all of this okay. that I have not mentioned yet is fit. Now I wanna make it really clear that judges should not and will not take into account your size versus the character's size your body shape your race your gender no then you're stupid they're stupid look at gucci look at all the name brands your Versa. okay let let her cook okay I i'm just saying Nothing about the body inside believe. the cosplay matters because okay. your body indicates absolutely nothing about your craftsmanship. But the way a cosplay fits that body does because fit is a part of craftsmanship. And in the video from Crown, Wait, okay, when she on, turns on, around, you can see that the cosplay is open in the back. This is why I'm pretty confident that the corsetry claim is- she's a fat. She's a fat lard. And you know what? You know what? I was going to make a joke. But I think she's right now. I did not understand. Yeah, she is a fat lard. Yeah. I was going to make a joke, but I understand what the point of the contest is now. It's not to make it look nice and appealing to people. Nay. It's about the craftsmanship. But... What I do want to say is I want to see statistics. If a gorgeous woman went up on the same cosplay as a lardo, who would win? Tell me, who would win? They have identical costumes. Who would win? Huh? Let's be honest. 
a lie Sorry. because I'm pretty sure that I would be able to see a corset and I see her skin. Maybe the corsetry claim is some kind of reference to some boning that might be in the dress that I can't see and wouldn't really have a reason to be there because it goes over their shoulders, but the dress closes with an invisible zipper. It's not a corset. In Lena's pictures, it is fully closed, meaning that originally it did close in the back. You'd think that if you were going to make changes to this cosplay, so many changes in fact that you thought you were allowed to compete in it, you'd think the first thing you do is make it actually fit you. You're like, yeah, it is legitimately harder to make a garment bigger than make it smaller, but it is nowhere near impossible. You remade the outrageously intricate pieces, but you couldn't add in an extra green panel or make it a lace up back so that it could close. Nah, it's just easier to use that back plate to cover up the gap. Is it possible that Myra was just ignorant to what is expected of cosplayers in this contest? Most contests make that 70% rule pretty clear. I had clear. no idea but like, about how this. do you calculate the percentage of a cosplay? By a weight? She might have legitimately thought that adding the rhinestones was enough. And if she were a brand new cosplayer, I might believe that. Because, I don't know, if we gauge how much the general public knows about these contests by how the general public generally reacts to most public costume contests True. with their Why did the dress beat the Big Mac? People don't understand these contests. It's kind of a problem. But Myra had been cosplaying I, for a and that, decade. That's me. I don't understand these co Why did the giant metal suit not beat the dress? <laughs> Big Mac was cool. That's right. And this comes from a man who helped put together a wedding dress. <laughs> so I don't even want to hear it. <laughs> I know how hard it is. At this point and was involved in large community groups. So I think she knew what she was doing. And the best indicator I have of her guilt is the fact that she blocked Lena. While this behavior is a giant outlier of audacity, it is a perfect example of how Yeehaw Cowboy Wild West, the cosplay competition scene truly is. Like we don't have well. a standardized set of rules for these contests for cons to follow. Uh, yeah, I agree. And we don't have a 100% guaranteed yeah. way to know if somebody made the cosplay that Other they're wearing. Herbina Crown Lardo? Championships yeah. is one of the biggest contests in the world, and nobody was well, able to catch How many cosplayers are women? Catch her because she bought a handmade cosplay from a small creator thousands of miles away. And I really don't blame the con runners or the staff or the judges in the contest she competed in for not catching this because she could have easily fooled me. The wildest thing to me, honestly, is why? For prize money? For attention? For me and most people that I know that compete, we don't really do it for the prizes. Like, the prizes are very cool. We look forward to the prizes. We like prizes. Please give us prizes. The reason why we break our backs and cry and sweat and bleed for these things is because we want to be proud of our abilities and our hey, work. Hey, it's Alice. We want validation and approval from knowledgeable judges. And we want feedback back from those judges on how we can improve and grow as makers. And all Myra really did is prove that Lena's work is so immaculate that it led several people to ignore a glaring fit issue. There's links to Lena's profiles in the description, by the way. You should go follow her. She's very talented. Myra has yeah. deleted all of their accounts, but if they ever come back from their shame walk, do not go bother them because I will call your mom. No bullying. Don't go bully people. I mean, I bullied people. And I turned out all right. Right? I'm a good person now. Just saying. People made fun of me when I was met, when I was younger. I was sick all the time, so I used to throw tables at them. Not wrong with that. People just got to be taught a lesson sometimes. It's just what happens. It's called being a man. 
They made up a dumb lie and made some judges and organizers feel like fools. And I am so sure that when this happened, her DMs and her comments uh -huh. were full of awful, mean things that opened up wounds that can never be crunch wrapped up. And I feel really bad actually giving out her cosplay name because while I can tell you not to go bug her all day long, it's still entirely possible that people will. But there is nothing stopping her from buying another cosplay from somebody who again. doesn't know anything about this and entering another competition with judges who have never heard of this before and doing this again. Except this time, it would be really hard to find out if she did because she's not posting anything on social media anymore and the only reason she got caught in the first place was because she posted the cosplay. I kind of want to warn as many people as I can so that nobody befalls the same fate right. as Lena. This girl made an amazing cosplay and, and somebody else good. ran around shrouded in her blood, sweat, and tears and whether intentionally or through misunderstanding erased her contribution. But I don't know, she didn't kill anybody. But if you see her enter a cosplay contest, maybe show the staff this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to support the channel directly, you can- Wow, that was good. Thank you. Here, I'm gonna post that. This here. Very well, well done. I mean, I didn't know there was such things as such uh, drama in cosplays. YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Well, I want to thank everyone for watching the YouTube video. I, I think this goes live when I'm on vacation, so I'm going to be vamooshed. But yeah.